Hi everyone, thank you so much for joining me today. Today we're going to create this beautiful prioritization matrix where we can prioritize the features or deliverables for our project into must-haves, should-haves, could-haves, and won't-haves based on the cost or effort to deliver it and the value or the benefit that we're going to get out of it. There are a few different ways we can show this beautiful prioritization matrix. One is with these colors that we have here, beautiful colors in the different quadrants, or we just have our normal prioritization matrix if that's what you prefer. By changing the cost or the benefit of any of these features, they will change on our prioritization matrix. I truly cannot wait to share this with you. It's going to be a whole bunch of fun. Let's get into it. The first thing we're going to do is just create a nice header all the way up the top. And we'll do that from A to Q and from rows one to four. Let's just select a nice deep blue for us to start with. Our second row can have our heading of prioritization matrix. Let's make that white and then let's make that all the way in the center by selecting this entire row and merging and centering our item. Let's center it in the middle make it a little bit larger, and now we've got a great first start. We'll do the same for our product or our feature name. Let's make that white. Let's put it over to the right hand side so that it's aligned nicely. We'll select the next few cells and we're going to merge those together. And with those cells, we can turn the background white so it's a nice input box for us. Let's give that just a thin outside border, make it a little bit larger and put this one in the middle so that that's aligned nicely. And now we've got the heading for our prioritization matrix. The next thing we're going to do is create the table where we can prioritize the features or deliverables. We're going to have the number, we're going to have the feature name, we're going to have the cost or the effort and just double click up here and that will align it for us. We're going to have the benefit or the value as well. Let's align that. Now we've got the heading. Let's give that a nice thick border all the way around the edge. We'll give the rest of our table a nice thick border as well. In fact, let's fill out this table a little bit more easily. If we go to our borders, more borders, we can make a nice dotted line right here, maybe a light gray here. And we'll put that on the inside horizontal lines. For the vertical inside lines, let's choose a normal solid line, maybe a little bit darker. And then if we click in the middle here, that will give us our nice vertical lines. And as you can see, there's our table completed. Let's give our heading some bold letters, a nice light blue for the heading, maybe a white color. And now that it can stand out a little bit more nicely, let's put that in the center and in the middle. And now we've got plenty of room to put all of the features or deliverables and prioritize them by cost or benefit. Once you've put your features or deliverables here and prioritize them, if we have a high cost, that's going to be closer to 10 from one to 10. If we've got a high benefit, that'll be close to 10. Let's put these in the middle, same as everything else. And our features can also go in the middle. We'll give each one a unique number from one to however many we need. And now we can start creating our prioritization chart. First, let's select all of this, these features and their cost and their benefit. We'll go to insert and we're going to insert a scatter diagram. Here's our scatter diagram. Now it doesn't look the way that we need it to look. So we're going to need to adjust a few things. First of all, let's get rid of this series title here. Let's right click on the chart area and we're going to say select data. Now there's two data series here. We only need one, so we're going to remove the second one. And the first one, let's edit this. Now the series X values, so across the bottom, let's get rid of those. And we want that to be our cost or our effort. So we'll just click and drag all of our values, cost and effort. And for the series Y values, the uh, vertical, we'll get rid of that as well. And we want that to be our benefit. So we'll click and drag. And now we'll have the right values if we click OK. And we'll click OK again. 
Now they're showing correctly on our chart. Now we want these axes to just uh, be from 1 to 10 and we want them to be 1 to 10 all the time. So we're going to click right click on the axis and format axis. Make sure that we've got the maximum of 10 there and we want the units to just be 1 every time so that we can see from 1 to 10 nice and easily. We're going to do a little trick with our title. We'll increase the size of this. If we click in our title and go to our formula bar, we're going to say equals and we'll equals the product or the feature name. Now it's going to be blank until we input our project name. And once we have something there, that's going to appear as the name on our chart. Now we still have a few things to add to our prioritization matrix. Let's select these data points and as you can see, if we click on one, all of them will select. We can right click and add the data labels. Now we have data labels. With those data labels, if we select those, right click and format data labels. Now we can make this a little bit nicer by making the label options over on the right here, value from cells. If we select that, the range that we want is our normal range from uh, all of the features on the left hand side. If we select all of those and click OK, now we've got feature names as we've named them instead of just numbers. We want to unclick the Y value and that gets rid of that other number. And we don't need the leader lines either. We can put these on the left of our feature or the right or above, wherever fits the best for you. I'm going to put them just on the left. Now we want these dots to be ever so slightly larger and we're going to click on, on these particular data points, go to the fill and line. And what we're looking at is a marker. We want the marker and the marker options. And it's currently automatic. We want the built-in markers. We still want the circle, so that's correct. But we can make the size a little bit larger, just so that that stands out for us. We don't want any border on our circles. And we can change the fill line to a solid fill, maybe a nice dark blue or any color that suits your particular situation. One last thing as we fill out this chart, we want to select the chart and go to chart design. We're going to add a chart element and we want the chart titles, the primary horizontal and primary vertical chart titles to show. So we're going to select both of those and make sure that they appear. Now we're going to use the same trick here. We'll select this title, go to our formula bar, press equals and the feature two at nine, that's uh, down the bottom here is our benefit or value. We'll select that title, press enter and that changes immediately for us. We'll do the same for our vertical axis. If we press equals and that's our cost or effort and press enter. Now we have those beautifully named and our matrix is really starting to take shape. Now we're going to create the quadrant so that we've got our must have, should have, could have or will not have quadrants really easily definable. And there's two ways that we can do this. The first one is with just uh, two lines and to do that we're going to use error bars. First of all let's put a five and a five which is the middle point of our matrix here. We're going to use these later. Let's select our chart again. Right click and select that data. What we're going to do is add a data point. And with that data point, our series X value will be the first five and the series Y value will be the second five. And this is going to be our error bars. We'll click OK. We'll click OK again. And now you can see we've got a dot in the middle of our screen. We're going to select that dot. We're going to go to chart design, add a chart element, and we're going to add the error bars as a percentage. Let's add that in. And now you can see we've got some lines. With these lines, we're going to select the line, go to our error bar options, and go to our chart options. And what we want is no cap on the end. Just, we just want a line, make it very nice. And the percentage down here, we want that to be 100% of our chart. As you can see now, we've got this beautiful line in the middle. 
Let's do it for our other error bar, all the way over to error bar options. No cap on the end and the percentage we want 100%. It's messed up our axis a little bit, so we'll select the axis, right click, format axis, and we just want that to be 10 as a max with one as the major units. Now it's starting to look really, really nice. Let's select this error bar again, but this time we're going to go to our fill and line options. Our solid line instead of automatic, let's create that. Now we can change the color to anything we like. Let's make it a nice golden color and we can even increase the size and make that stand out for us. Let's do the same with our other error bar, solid line, nice golden color, increase the size and it's looking better and better every time we touch it. We've still got that dot in the middle, so we'll right click on that dot, format that data series, go to our series uh, line and marker options. This one is a marker, so we're just going to go to marker options and we're going to say no marker here, and that makes it disappear. And now we've just got a beautiful quadrant for our project excellence prioritization matrix. Now there is one final trick that I really want to show you, and that is how to give us a beautiful colored background and also just a few text boxes that we can name them must have, should have, could have and won't have. But the colored background will make our chart really stand out. First of all, we're going to go to PowerPoint. And in PowerPoint, if we have a blank presentation, we want to make sure that our presentation is just the standard view. So we'll go to design, slide size, and make sure that is standard. Then we want to go to insert shapes and insert a nice square. We'll insert that square, make sure it's all the way up at the top left and in the middle with the zero and halfway down to the zero. We're going to right click, make sure there's no outline and we can give this fill color just any nice fill color that we want, maybe a nice blue to start with. If we control C and control V, that will copy another square for us. We can change the fill of that one. We'll select them both, control C, control V to copy again, and move that all the way down. This one will give a nice yellow color. And the last one, which is our will not have, let's give that a slightly red color so that we know that we're not going to have those items. Once we have this in PowerPoint, we go to File and we want to Save As. We want to save this as a JPEG to make it nice and small, a nice small picture file. If that's a JPEG file, and we can name this anything we like as long as we can find this later on. Once that is saved, we're going to click, go back to our Excel, click on the Chart Area, right click and format the Plot Area. Now we've got Plot Area options and with our fill, we want that to be a picture or texture fill. Now to select the picture that we've just chosen, even though that's already appeared for us because I've done this before, we can insert the picture source. And if we click insert here, we want to select it from a file. And we just choose that JPEG that we created before. And now we have a beautiful background. We can make a few adjustments here. If we select these gray lines, we can have no lines and get rid of those. And for our error bars in the middle, we can change those maybe to more of a gray, just so that they're not clashing with the other colors that we're using. And now our chart is looking really, really good. If we control C to copy this, add a new sheet, and then control V to paste this, we can have this in its very own worksheet. We'll go to view, remove the grid lines, and now we've got our very own beautiful prioritization matrix where it automatically prioritizes the features based on their cost or their effort and their benefit or their value. I hope you've enjoyed spending this time and creating this amazing template, and I can't wait to hear about the wonderful things that you're going to do with it. I'll see you in the next video. Bye for now.